at the Mound City Historical Park in Mound City, Kansas, which is about 80 miles south of Kansas City. And they have about eight to 10 structures that we're going to get to check out today. Let's start with the Mound City bandwagon. Now the plaque says it was built in the 1840s and it came to Mound City with the circus in 1865 and it was restored in 1988. So that has a question. I have a question. Why did they leave it here? What happened in 1865? So I jumped in my car and I googled it really quick and what I found out was is that it was really bad weather in 1865. They couldn't feed their animals so a local man lent them some money. They couldn't pay him back so they gave him the bandwagon and when the man passed away he gave the bandwagon to the city of Mount City. Now my question is does the city ever get the sucker out for parades and if they do I'm so coming back. All right, this building here is why I know about this park. This is a recreation of Fort Montgomery, and it was the home of James Montgomery, and he was an abolitionist who was possibly the leader of the Jayhawkers, and he was on a level right there with John Brown. All right, so let's read this plaque. It says, original cabin fort built in 1855, five miles west of Mound City. The original building was the second cabin owned by James Montgomery as the first was burned down by pro-slavery Missouri border ruffians. The logs were placed vertically on the building and were so tightly fitted together that bullets could not penetrate the walls. The family slept in the loft. The cabin had a cellar used to shelter fugitive slaves and was an escape for Colonel Montgomery through a tunnel that went into the mound located near the structure. James Montgomery was a school teacher and a minister who came to the Kansas Territory in 1854 from Ohio to fight for the abolition of slavery. Colonel Montgomery was the free state leader of a group of men called the Immortal 50 who became known as the Kansas Jayhawkers. They were a force in the bleeding Kansas era of 1854 to 1861. Colonel Montgomery served in the Civil War and led black troops in South Carolina. He worked with Harriet Tubman on raids, and he fought at the Battle of Mine Creek. He died in his cabin, Fort Home, west of Mound City in 1871, where he farmed and lived with his wife and seven children. He is buried in the National Cemetery Soldier's Plot in Mound City. This is a very interesting building, and I really do wish that it was open, but it's not. So I'm going to come back when it is open, and I will bring you with me, so stay tuned for that. And here's a piece of interesting trivia for you. James Montgomery was portrayed by Cliff D. Young in the 1989 movie, Glory. This looks like a corn crib or maybe some place that they would keep their vegetables to keep them out of the weather. Let's, uh, let's check it out. Let's peek in there and see what it looks like. I really do think it's amazing that the city saved all of these buildings and brought them into one place. This is the Clawson cabin and it is circa 1900 and it is an original structure. The sign says, relocated in 1982 from the Centerville area. Last log cabin inhabited in Lynn County, made of persimmon wood. The mansard roof style allowed a sleeping loft. The cabin was taken apart log by log, moved and rebuilt by the Mound City Historical Society. Those logs, I mean, this building looks really kind of structurally sound. I mean, it looks really sturdy. Oh, let's go check out and see if we can see inside. And you can see a little bit in here. There's some clothing, a little wash basin. Kind of gives you a little bit of an idea. 
Oh my gosh, I think this is just the cutest little cabin. And unfortunately, we can't see through this window because it's curtained. But up there is the mansard roof with the sleeping quarters. There are three bells in the park, and this bell is called the Frisco Bell, and it's dedicated to the Wesley Chapel community in memory of David and Ruth Campbell, who were founding members of the church and early day pioneers of the community. And here is a school. So what is an old town without a school? I will say this over and over again. If a whole town is obliterated, the one thing that will continue to stand is the schoolhouse. This is number nine school and it was built in 1867 and it was relocated in 1976. It's built of lumber that was hauled by a team in a wagon from Westport. The site also had a horse barn, a coal shed, two outdoor toilets, and a dug well. This school is a one room school, one teacher schoolhouse. Students one through eight, so I guess grades one through eight, attended and numbered from as many as 70 to as few as nine. The school closed in 1959, and the salaries for the teachers ranged from $33 to $350 a month. And we can't see in, but these old school houses, they all look the same. So here is the inside of Trading Post Kansas School. Now I was able to visit there a few weeks ago and those buildings were open. And that video will be out shortly as well as a visit to the Trading Post Cemetery. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss those. This is the largest bell here at the park and it is the Mound City Fire Bell. <music> We are coming up on the Warzell Bungalow. The plaque on this building reads circa 1915. Relocated from across the street in 1983, the original owner, Mr. Gus Warzell and Mr. Ernest Schultz built an electric plant across the street to the east in 1915. The blocks used to form the porch are made from cement poured into forms and were typical of the era. The house was purchased from the Jehovah Witness Church. I think we can look inside these windows and maybe see a room or two. Let's see. Yeah, that looks like uh, the back room maybe. All of these windows are just really dirty so it's hard to get a good shot so I'm really shocked I've gotten what I've gotten so far and this door is absolutely beautiful I really love the weathered look and how you can see the red is worn through it's just so cool So that looks like a ice house and they would store their perishable produce in there. But more importantly, look at those beautiful flowers. They are absolutely gorgeous. I was really excited to see this crawl space open. And it's quite empty, but it's still creepy. So this is the Mound City, Missouri Pacific Depot, and it is circa 1886. So the Missouri Pacific Railroad ran from Butler, Missouri through Mound City to Madison, Kansas. The Mound City Depot was built in 1886 to 1888 near 3rd and Hemlock. The last train ran through Mound City in 1949 bringing the last load of 10,000 poles to complete the electrification of Lynn County. The building was purchased from Allen and Norma Brown and brought to the park in 1981. I'll tell you what, the railway coming through your town in the middle of the 19th century could make or break a community. There are so many abandoned towns here in Kansas that just died when the railway passed them up. And yes, I tried to get in that door, but it was closed, so we're just going to have to suffice with looking through these dirty windows, but it's still kind of cool. What I notice is that china cabinet over there full of porcelain. And here is another window that we are going to peek in, and yeah, it's really hard to see anything in there. 
Mound City is a very small town. In 2020, there were just over a thousand people, but it is the county seat of Lynn County. And it was settled in 1855, and it was officially incorporated in 1857. The last structure to look at is this barn. But when I took pictures of the inside, it was so dark you couldn't even see. So it's just a barn at this point. All right, we're gonna go check out this windmill. So what I do know about windmills is that this is how they got water before there were like electric pumps and stuff. So this windmill was purchased and moved to this park by Eugene Campbell and the concrete watering tank came from the Campbell farm southwest of Mound City and is over a hundred years old. I hope you enjoyed our visit today. I certainly did. Thank you for sticking around so much. If you liked today's video, be sure to like and subscribe because I post videos on awesome Kansas and Missouri history every Thursday. See you guys next week.